Now I'd like to invite Dr. Andrew Carter from the Department of Public Health and Recreation. Excellent, thank you Dr. Shillington. So the name of my presentation is, this isn't just a white millennial thing, the diversity paradox and the free fitness movement. Next slide, please. So the key disparity that I'm addressing with my research project is physical activity. So previous research has indicated that physical activity disparities exist between African-American and Latino populations in comparison to their white counterparts. And several factors have contributed to these disparities, those of which include the built environment, access to green spaces, as well as cultural barriers. And as it relates to the broader U.S. population, a population in which only 10% um, of U.S. adults meet the required physical activity guidelines for Americans, uh, recommendations as it relates to physical activity, um, innovative approaches such as fitness boutiques, this will be things like a soul cycle and core power yoga, and community capacity building models, things such as CrossFit uh, and Barry's Boot Camp have also largely re reflected these disparities. Next slide, please. So the research site where we're conducting this study is Oakland, California. And as we all know, being here in the Bay Area, Oakland is nationally recognized for addressing significant social and cultural issues such as racial equality, LGBTQ rights, freedom of speech, and environmental concerns. And in fact, in 2019, Oakland was ranked as one of the most ethnically diverse major cities in the U.S. However, within this landscape, weight-related health disparities still persist. Uh, for example, African American and Latino African Americans and Latinos in Oakland are disproportionately affected by obesity, with rates of 28.9 percent and 26.6 percent, respectively, in comparison to 21.3 percent of whites. Next slide, please. So in our current study, we were curious to what degree the community and capacity building ethos um, in many boutique fitness settings and some of the other innovative approaches as it relates to engaging individuals to exercise could be implemented as a mechanism to engage diverse communities to physical activity, uh, particularly communities of color. Um, so in our study, we explore the role of fitness communities as a mechanism to engage these diverse populations in physical activity. So we define the fitness communities having three components. Um, one individuals or communities engage uh, in exercise in dynamic groups. Two, communities engage with one another using social media or some sort of online network. Um, and three, communities engage in, in hangouts outside of the physical gym or fitness setting. So specifically in our study, we examine how constructs of diversity and inclusivity are communicated at a free open to the public fitness community based in Oakland, California. <clears throat> so the research questions that guided our study was one, how do participants describe perceptions of diversity and inclusivity? And two, how are constructs of diversity and inclusivity communicated? More specifically, what assumptions are they building on and what are the messages? Next slide, please. So in terms of our preliminary findings, uh, we conducted in-depth interviews with both structural leadership as well as with members or community members. Uh, two of the primary themes, uh, participants described both how the community was committed to diversity and inclusivity, as well as some of the challenges and complexities as it related to that. Uh, so some of the things that they talked about in terms of the, com the commitment to, to diversity and inclusivity um, was fitness, age, and racial diversity and inclusivity. Structural leadership talked about how they were able to scale workouts depending upon an individual's uh, physical ability. They also talked about openly recruiting uh, people of color to leadership positions. Um, and then members talked about how this free, free model of fitness could be used to engage diverse communities, particularly in a place such as the Bay Area, where um, we currently have the highest monthly gym membership in the country. However, in alignment with that, they also described challenges and complexity to diversity and inclusivity. One of that being discursive barriers. Um, for example, historically, the organization and community has been uh, represented by both white leadership as well as white, white membership. And they talked about the kind of um, the image uh, and the perceptions as it related to outgroup community members or outgroup members wanting to engage with the community. They also discussed recruitment challenges. So for example, um, the, the main uh, purpose or the main type of recruitment that was being done um, among the community was through interpersonal social networks and using things like social media and Instagram. Um, and what, what we found with this was, while useful in some contexts, um, that this kind of friends inviting friends model would end up happening is you would um, develop kind of similar, or you would recruit individuals with similar like-mindedness, similar racial backgrounds, as well as cultural orientations. And this is where this diversity complex, or this diversity um, paradox comes into play. It's where on the one hand, you have um, individuals coming together under this kind of 
um, shared commitment to diversity and inclusivity, while at the same time you have groups by and large similar in terms of racial background and cultural orientation and ideological perspectives. Next slide, please. So in terms of the future trajectory of our research, we're currently partnering with other fitness communities in the Bay Area, looking at these issues from various contexts, uh, as well as a variety of intervention area uh, efforts. We're currently um, in talks with this current fitness community to create some sort of a large scale social marketing plan to reach uh, diverse communities in Oakland and then more broadly expanding it to a national, potentially an international intervention, as well as grant funding opportunities. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cotter, for your presentation.